All right, now we're joined on the phone by the head coach for the Edgesville Eagles baseball team. Final com- or putting their fi- finishing touches on the practices up here in Hedgesville. Head coach Eric Grove, how are you doing today, Coach Grove? Great, good to be with you all. As you guys get ready to head down to Charleston tomorrow, I believe you're leaving around 8 a.m. Uh, what's this kind of last week of you know getting the seniors graduated and then uh, getting everybody some rest and then practicing for the state tournament? What's it been like for your team? Yeah, it's been a great week, and honestly, I thought we'd maybe a little better prepared this time than last time. I was a little nervous going into our regional tournament. I think the kids got a couple of days off they needed, and graduation went great, and got to be there for that, and have a couple of them sign into play somewhere in college here soon. So there are a lot of changes in their lives, and that's one of the things that's hard. I've talked to other coaches about when they're seniors, and uh, how invested do they stay? And uh, I really told him, I said, look, it's, or this was a couple of days ago, but you have one week of practices left, win or lose, and then you're going to go be adults and hopefully bring success in your own life. And we're excited for all of them and excited for the opportunity in front of us this week. Coach, you brought up being invested. And I think when you look at your team and your roster, uh, that's kind of been a strength of the team this year. You have a few seniors that were either got a lot of playing time last year and have had to accept new roles on the team this year. Uh, And you've had pitchers that are just pitchers and and guys that have done a lot of different things for you. What has, I guess, helped this team become so invested and how did you get this team to buy in this season? Well, first of all, I think they're great people and, um, you know, we've always had to have that type of culture here because I don't know that, Every talent wise, you know, Hedgesville is the, the smallest triple A school in the panhandle, I think. So our pool is a little smaller, and we have to have people that are willing to accept roles. And, you know, it starts with, you know, the, their schooling and their parenting growing up. And a lot of times the kids understand a diminished role when maybe their parents and other people surrounding them don't. And um, for, for the way that they've bought in and stayed, uh, you know, invested in, in their time, whether or not it's a pinch hit or to pitch or to catch or whatever, I think speaks volumes to the type of people they are and how they'll be successful in the next stage of their life because that's really just, just a springboard into hopefully something bigger and better for all of them. And I couldn't be more proud of this is a 20-man roster we've carried in the playoffs and how everybody's been so willing and accepting of what they have to do is I think while we're in this position and uh, it gives me confidence going forward that uh, these kids are the kids that we want to be here. Coach Grove, Colin here. Congratulations, first off, on making it to the state tournament uh, since I haven't got to tell you that yet. But going into this week, as you already mentioned, uh, graduation, kids now out of school, so maybe even looking for summer jobs or just plans in general for the summer. So what's the preparation been like for you this week with – all the changes that you already said that are going on this week as well at the same time. Well, and I think there's I actually talked to a few other coaches that were not baseball people, but we just talked about you know, can you overdo it when you're in this circumstance? We I gave them off Sunday and Monday. Well, there had to be off Sunday, but I gave them off Monday, and we had a pretty short practice on Saturday just because I, I think you can overdo it this time of year. And I know I want to stay sharp, and I'm I'm at least a little bit concerned that we haven't been able to play a game in this gap. It wasn't without some effort, but it's just hard when we're kind of up here secluded off and everybody else is relatively close together. I'd have to drive four hours to go play a game, and I think that just is a law of diminishing returns, really, even though it would have been what we wanted. We've, We've hit good bit when we've had the chance we went over some you know some, some specific things i think we could see in a tight game with bunts and steals and situational stuff that maybe are a little more uh important or at least magnified in a game of this situation but it's a fundamental game and our kids have been doing the fundamentals as well as i could have asked the last 20 games so when you get when you play kind of a season of series where you play each team twice that matters, and then you play a regional where you win two out of three, and now it comes down to single games like this. You know, there's there's a lot of things involved, but the, uh, to me, the biggest one is is luck. You have to have things go your way, and 
Um, I hope that we're prepared and we just need to go out and execute and hope that Lady Luck's on our side. And a follow-up question on the same topic of preparation for this week. Uh, The state tournament played at Gilmart Park. It's a turf field in Charleston. Uh, Have you guys tried to, I guess, prepare for turf, being that you've only played one game this year on turf and that being at uh, Martinsburg? Uh, I mean, we've tried a little bit in our batting cage. Our our motto is kind of if if we can field a ground ball out here, we'll be able to field one on some nice carpet somewhere. And I hope that uh, you know, I know it, 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 it's the game speeds up a little bit on turf, but I don't think that uh, I, I don't think it makes a ton of difference. At least I hope it doesn't. I mean, we still just have to execute. You know, put our body in the way of ground balls and just trust our hands and be ready for every position we're put in. And it would have been nice, but I, I, you know, we, we played at uh, a field in Clarksburg last year that was turf. And some of the kids can remember that too, a little bit. I know it's not, that has nothing to do with preparation, but I think in some play in some, uh, in some uh, summer leagues and stuff where they've played on turf before. So, we're really just going to rely on what got us here and hope that that's not a difference maker when we get down there. I don't know too many places around the state where they're able to play on turf a lot, but obviously you you could only in one place up here. So it makes it tough, but I, I think I think we'll be okay. Coach Dylan Bishop here. You mentioned the difference in preparation going into these single elimination games in the state tournament, but also you're playing against teams that you're not quite as familiar with this season compared to the teams you're playing in sectionals and regionals. Uh, what sort of difference in the preparation and even strategy uh, do you have when it comes to playing these teams that you haven't played quite as much as, you know, Martinsburg or a Musselman? It's definitely taken me a lot of detail at nighttime to try and get some charts and watch some video and do these teams haven't been real. uh, uh, They haven't put a lot of their stuff out there. So it's been hard to find, but I've charted. Obviously I've spent more time on university than the other two, just because I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch. And uh, we got our work cut out for us on Friday, but I tried to chart them, look at their pitching, talk to a few people. I know this team hits incredibly well, so we have to be ready for that. I'm not sure the level of pitching and defense that is in their region, but I do think they hit real well. So uh, we're kind of charting their guys. They've been hit by pitches 85 times, which is probably double anybody in the state. So we've been working with pitching a little bit as far as you know when they're going to stand on the line and lean into stuff. And a lot of times they're standing on the inside line to try and push the outside pitch to right field, a lot of the right-handed hitters. So... We kind of have that documented, and now it just comes down to execution. And uh, it is difficult because I don't know a lot about these teams. University hasn't been there in a while, and we've been a couple years. And, you know, it's been a little bit of a different setup this time for some of these teams. So, uh, But that's that's all part of the experience, and sometimes you just have to put all that to the side and just go perform. And, Coach, I know different sports, different state tournaments, kind of they're, they're different, but in a way that they're the same, how much do you think guys like Jackson Rest and uh, Noah Brown having gone down to the state tournament for basketball are going to kind of be helpful on, you know, how to do a long trip like that? Yeah, I think it helps. And, I, you know, these kids have, uh, you know, they had to make a long trip for football too, but it was that's definitely different. But they – uh, to go and play on something where you know it's a little more selective and to stay overnight. That's why we try and take an overnight trip earlier in the year. I thought our kids were great this year at Greenbrier. And uh, this, is a, this is a great opportunity, win or lose. I, I, I always told myself I should go more to this as a spectator in my years that we don't fortunately get to make it there because I feel like I take some of the enjoyment out of it just with all the work that goes in, but I think our kids are going to really enjoy it. It's a great opportunity, and to be one of four teams, it feels very selective compared to other chances where there might be six, eight, 16, whatever. So we're going to take that, and we're very proud of everything we've accomplished, and uh, hopefully we're not complacent on that. But it's, it's, I think Jackson, Noah, Landon, and people that have, you know, been in the spotlight before, they'll have to, be a big part of what we do this time too coach uh what's your thoughts on your matchup i think there's a few interesting storylines heading into this one uh you mentioned university hasn't been there in a while and traditionally when people think of the team coming out of 
Uh, this region, it's Jefferson. For their region, it's Bridgeport. So kind of two teams that weren't necessarily uh, expected to be here before the season. Yeah, I think uh, with – and, and, you know, it's been a few years since we played university. I think it was our last time we went to the state tournament in 2019 when we played them and we uh, won one up here, but then we lost an ugly game against them the last day at the beach. And there has been a lot of change since then. But uh, as far as, like, coming out of their region, I know it's usually a really competitive region. I think you would say a couple of those teams were probably a little bit down this year. But if you just look at their body of work, they put up a ton of runs. It seems like they maximize a lot of their chances. They've got one player that hit more home runs than our entire team. But that that doesn't matter when it comes down to what we're getting ready to go do. And uh, I just uh, we're going to work with we're going to work with Lane in game one, and we're going to you know talk with him about what we would like to do to strategize and. Uh, set up the rest of our bullpen guys if we need them for, you know, this is what we need in certain situations. I'm going to have a little card for our guys about shifting and so on. We're going to do the best we can to be ready for the moment. And and uh, I think it's going to be a great game. And I, I really am, you know, seeing a lot of good things out of what university's done. So we need to, it, it kind of feels like we're playing a team like Musselman that hits real well. So we have to be, be ready for that, hopefully up to the challenge. Changing gears a little bit, Coach Grove, just wanted to get your comments on uh, Braylon Connor being named to the team for the North and the North-South All-Star game that will take place Sunday. Yeah, I mean, I, we, I was able to nominate him and Gage, and I told them both that we'd come down to a selection process. Jackson had to, he was going on vacation, and I kind of went just down, and we tried to average guys out, and then Chris French goes on the tear in the playoffs. It would have been great to get him to get to go, but working on stuff with them. I mean, Braylon's really been the spark plug at the top of our lineup. He's been a, a fearless leader this year, especially the second half of the year. I was so proud of him when things didn't go his way a couple times. That some of the development he showed made me feel like he's ready to go to the next level. And this would be a great chance for him to go perform and to showcase what Hedgesville is. He's going to get dirty, even though they're playing on turf field. He's going to get down. He's going to go through the trenches, and he's going to give them everything they – that uh, he's got, and uh, hopefully we get to go do all that after we win a state championship. Because I know that means a lot to him, it means a lot to his family, and it means a lot to all of us. So, uh, but he's a great representative for our school, and he hit. I think he probably hit 80, 90 points higher than anybody else on our team. So he's very deserving. And coach, before we uh, you know finish it up here, I want to ask you a question that I feel like at this point in the season you can ask. It's you know, it's two games away from it being a reality. Ten years ago, the Hedgesville Eagles won a state championship. What would it mean ten years later to win another one? Well, and it, it's it, it it kind of hits you when I'm driving to work in the morning. I look over at the school and I'm thinking, you know, we could do something for this place and these people that. Uh, will have a lasting effect because it's not been done all that often here. And I'd like to – I think our program's been trending in the right direction, and we've had a couple opportunities. We had a great opportunity in 2019, and it was a – you know, it was a just an absolute pitching fest down there. We came out on the wrong side of it, and that's what baseball is sometimes. And So, you know, two games is – I mean, that's nothing in the big, big scheme of things of how many games that we play. So there is a sense of finality to it, and everybody's been so uh, just appreciative of what we've done, and so just so willing to help. And our that's you know it just makes me feel good in our community with our little league and the people that buy in and and care about us. And uh, you know, I, last few years we put a lot of good products on the field, even though maybe our wins and losses were a little down and. But just to see our kids go off to college, I feel like we've been producing there at a high level for a long time. So it'd be great to bring a piece of hardware back here and just to show everybody that, you know, Hedgesville baseball is going to continue to rise. And we hope this is a a crowning achievement for this group. It'd be a great achievement for this group. And um, me personally, I mean, I will cherish it. But uh, I, I got a lot of great people to thank, my assistant coaches, my athletic department has been so supportive of us, our little league, and the people here. It's it's a it's a community effort, and I'm so proud of everybody. Coach Grove, our guest. Thanks for the time, and hopefully we're talking next week.